All right, everyone, if we can take our seats, we'll get started with the session. Um, if you could please take your seats. Okay, so in this session, we're going to go through a couple more country presentations. Um, so we're going to be hearing from Nepal, our team in Central Asia, and then two Pacific Island countries virtually, Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. So I'm going to start with Nepal, so I'll ask them please if they could come up and uh, share their presentation. Thank you. Uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, on the behalf of my country, Nepal, now I am presenting about the, our DHIS situation, what we are doing in DHIS, and what we are facing the challenges, and what way forward for the coming years. Next. This one. Next. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, he's doing okay. So basically, my presentation focuses on this area: background of the our HMI systems, introduce and different aspect of the HMIs and current status of the HS implementation, and the beyond the HMIs, other soft system also use the DHS to what are these software and how how can they link to the HMIs? My presentation focuses on that area. And then what are the opportunity and challenges in, in, in my country regarding to, to launch DHS2 and move forwards for the coming years. Next. Next, please. Yeah. Okay. This is the map of my country. Uh, actually, my uh, based on the uh, current uh, constitution, my country divided in seven provinces. Basically, my country uh, is, is the highly diversity country in terms of the geographical terrain, in terms of the caste, ethnicity, as well as the languages. So basically my country is famous for the two things. One is that my country is the birthplace of the Gautam Buddha, which is also called, called the light of the Asia. And another is that my country is uh, uh, the, the highest peak of the world, we call the Mount Everest, lies in my country. But basically we have the high range of the mountain, the Himalayas, and then the hill area and Tara, flat Tara area. So it is a very high diversity country. Uh, next. And uh, altogether, 29.1 million is the population of my country. And then, uh, we have already reached the population replacement level. Life expectancy is uh, more than 71 years. So, based on the current uh, federal federalism, uh, uh, on the basis of current constitutions are uh, country divided in the three parts. Basically, the federal law, we have the federal government, we have the provincial government, we have the local level governments. So we have the three types of governments. All are the autonomous and the constitution provide that their rights, rights, uh, rights, uh, 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 and also the mutual right also. So if you look at the federal systems, we have the Minister of Health and Populations, and then the, in, the, in the health sectors, under the Minister of Health and Population, we have the Department of Health Services, which is the largest department in, in, in the federal systems, uh, and the Department of Ayurveda and Alternative Medicine and Department of Drug Administration. These are the major department. Looks the quality and the standards uh, of the health system throughout the countries. And we have the universities, council, and territorial specialized hospitals under the federal systems. If you look at the provincial systems, we have the seven provinces, and then each province have their one ministry, they have the one cabinet, they have the one parliament in each province, and under the that health ministry, uh, there is the health division, there is the uh, health training centers, uh, provincial lab centers, and then we have the 77 districts throughout the country. And if you look at the local level governments, sometimes we also call the polygas. 
uh, we have the 753 polygons we have. And under the, this polygons, uh, we have the, uh, in each polygon, there, there is the health unit, there is the health unit, and each health unit, uh, uh, in each health unit, there is the health post, primary health care centers, basic health service centers, all are comes under the local level governments. Next. Yes, this is the history of my HMIS. Yes, uh, HMIS established in uh, 1993. And then the, in the 2000, uh, 2007, um, uh, our ministry has appro had approved the HSIS, that means the health sector information strategy. And based on that strategy, we have piloted uh, in the three, di three, districts, three, three districts in 2007 to 2011. So at that period, we have the two parallel systems. One comes under the HMIS, another comes under the HAS systems. So in, uh, we started the online data entry system in 2012, and we based online data in 2013. And then, and then the, in 2014, we merged both parallel systems and integrate into one single system. We, at that time, we totally revised our, uh, our, our HMIS skills, recording, reporting, monitoring, all the tools, and it started one single integrated health information system throughout the country. And uh, in, in 2016, yes, this is the time we started the HIS2 platform for the HMIS in 2016. But in 2016, we only reached the district level. Uh, we don't reach, uh, don't reach in the uh, Palika levels, LNG levels. But in 2018, we covered all the Palika levels, all the LNG levels. So right now, every government health facility, uh, health facility covers under the DHS platform. And uh, most of the private sector report to uh, under the uh, uh, DHS systems. And if you look, uh, if you look the data, um, uh, May, uh, around the 10,000 health facility every year report in our DHS prepared platform. Every month, sorry, every month report in DHS prepared platform. Among the 10,000, around the 3,300 3, directly reporting, uh, 3,300 health facility directly report to the DHS too. That is, that is going on. And our future aim is all of all health, health facilities should directly enter in DHS2. That is the uh, future objective of our HMI systems. So, uh, and uh, we have already implemented ICD-11, ICD-11 coding systems, especially for the mortality and morbidity. But uh, in the morbidity, we, uh, it is going on very smoothly because ICD-11 is also the online web-based online uh, coding system. It is very good. And then WHO share support to us to, to launching that part. But the, in the area of the uh, mortality, especially yesterday, we, we also uh, uh, from the zone presentation, cause of death. Yes, we are facing in, uh, some problem in the for, for the cause of death. So we will further discuss with the OSLO team regarding these issues. So, uh, and uh, recently we measured HMI tools device done. And it is the third time. And then based on that revised tools, we already updated the, our DHS2 platform. Now we, we have the updated SMIS, all the recording reporting paper-based tools, as well as we have based on those uh, revisions, we have already updated the DHS2 platform. And we started uh, from the last, uh, in Nepal, our fiscal year started from just six, uh, six months back. So we can, we can start getting the, fresh and revised uh, variables information in our DHS2 platform. Next. Yes, uh, this is the digital health journey of Nepal, which I already mentioned. Next. So yes, these are the guiding legal documents which support to us to strengthen the, our health information systems. We have the constitution, it is clearly mentioned in that constitution, uh, information is the fundamental right of the people. It is clearly mentioned. That's why it, it, uh, it support to us to provide the, any type of the information, uh, any type of information demand by the stakeholders. Basically in the sum of special individual information, we cannot share individual information, but aggregate of the information, we can share the public based on that constitution. And we have the statistical acts, 
and then we have the health policy and strategy it is clearly mentioned in the uh, uh, health policy and strategy we should have the one single comprehensive integrated information system and system should uh, should use the modern and high tech it is clearly mentioned in that document that document based on that document we are performing and we are improving the our smis and yes we have the cabinet decisions the, uh, especially in the context of the federal transition period public health service act we have regulations regulation uh, we have the uh, national e health strategy 2017 and recently our government passed the ismis road map and this this road map for up to 2030 based on that road map we can perform any activities so government has fully committed committed for technically financially every part government is ready to support to us based on that documents so it is the one very very good thing for us to 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 performing better for upcoming years next yes uh, this is our hmi system basically our hmi system the very large system core routing web based systems information system that has been put place in the ministry of health and population so it captures the all the health facility related data basically all the health services deliveries public health activities morbidity mortality opd inpatient services surgery diagnosis services all type of services we collect the data from the each and every, each and every each health facility from the community uh, community to national levels so uh, basically the health facility is the primary data generating point for us uh, i have already mentioned we have the 10004 health facility per month reporting to us among them 7542 almost all government uh, health facility report to us and then the non public sector it's around the 2463 we, we don't capture 100% private sector reporting but we are try, trying our best Yes, and then we are using the 73 different type of the recording and reporting tools and multi monitoring sheets in the, our systems. Next. Yes, uh, DHS to platform we use for the electronic ma management of the GSMIS data. I have already mentioned. Aggregate multi data is submitted to SMI central database, DHS to platform from the health facility and uh, their parental units. Those who are directly enter the data in the system and remaining are sending their report to the our local level government. In each local level government, we have the one delegated, trained, equipped person we have. We call the focal person. And that focal person enter the, all the paper-based report in the online system by health facilities. That is our system in my country. So uh, yes, uh, three level of the governments, all, all three, three tiers of the governments, line ministry, all the line ministry, Nepal Plan, Planning uh, uh, Commission, and uh, external development partners, all the stakeholders are key data users of the SMIs. And one thing I, I want to very much clear here, uh, those program division who are using the tracker, they are not eligible to send the report to ministry. They have to come from our SMI systems because it is clearly mentioned that what well, there is the only one uh, system which report to the ministry, which report to the National Planning Commission, report to the Ministry of Finance, report to the uh, WHO and other partners. So tracker users should must verify that data to our HMI system. After the verified, then only HMI shared the data to the all the uh, concerned stakeholders. That is the system. So that's why. Uh, we sit together, all the divisions, and every uh, first month of the uh, uh, first week of each month, we sit uh, together, uh, SMI's focal person and program data focal person sit together and verify the data through the uh, tracker and through the, our SMI's. And, and SMI's always keep the integrate of the data. We don't uh, take the individual data. That's why after matching, then it is ready to send the concern division and uh, centers that is the process uh, and uh, all uh, yes next yeah uh, um, um, hmis use the dhis platform i already mentioned and uh, basically dhis2 is right now it is a one system that coordinates all the three tier of the governments 
in the federal system, sometimes sometime it creates the problem, especially for the other program division facing the, some sort of the problems. It's, a, it's a, due to the lack of the coordination, collaboration, due to the right of the uh, things uh, to, to treat out of the autonomous governments. But DHIS2 and our HMIS is only that platform who link all the three tier of the governments. That's why it is, uh, uh, that's why Minister of Health and Population always put very important to the IHMI systems. And uh, yes, we have produced the uh, six level of data, national level, province level, district level, LAG level, ward, even world level, health facility, health facility level, we can produce the data in our DHIS2 system. And we are using the API, many hospital, many health facilities, uh, directly sent to the report to our DHIS2 platform. It is going on. And then use of the standard dashboard for monitoring program indicated in DHIS2. And we regularly provide the access to the, all the division and concern centers to look their data uh, month in, in the monthly basis. Next. Yes, for the data quality, our concern is also the data quality. How can we make the, our data very, very, very high level of of accuracy and then high level of the reliable and valid data. So for that, uh, from the province level, we we send the amount and guideline to 753 palikas, budget to 753 palikas directly from the central level through the HMIS. And we provide the guideline to them. In that guideline, it is clearly mentioned how can they verify the data, how can they uh, uh, monthly meeting, how can they conduct what are the tools they have to they have to uh, use, and what are the procedure? Everything they uh, each and every uh, LLG has uh, has conduct perform conduct in that way. So so uh, that 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 also very uh, link closely linked to LLG to the our central levels and province levels, because we provide the budget, we provide the guideline to all the uh, local level government. And based on our guideline and budget, they are performing the things. And basically, each every month they perform the data verification, and then they they, they, they perform the monthly review, and quarterly review, and annual review, and they produce the annual report, annual report each month, each each year, every LA, local level governments, and that is the good things for us. And they share to that report to the province as well as the uh, federal level. That is the system uh, happening in my country. And then regularly feedback, follow-up, data, uh, uh, data routinely system is conducted by the each and every, uh, every levels. Regularly conduct the RDQ, you routinely data quality audit, data quality audit uh, in health facility district. It is uh, regularly going on. Uh, it, it, it done by the province as well as the, from the central levels and sometimes district level also perform the RDQ for the health facilities. And we have regularly monitoring on-site coaching through the all levels. And we have also uh, sent some sort of the budget for especially monitoring and uh, on-site coaching to the, pro uh, to the province as well as the districts. And data management committee and DHS to are interested regularly at each level. Data quality are checked by the following major three indicators. These are the major core indicators. We always look basically timeliness of the reports, completeness of the reports, Completeness in term of the institution, completeness in term of the programs. We always look basically these two, two things and the validation rule. In our DHIS2, we have already put validation, we have already set the validation rule. Based on that, that validation, what are the feedback comes? We immediately uh, immediately inform to them. And the, after reducing the, all the uh, validation, then they have to send the report to the uh, systems. That, that is the things uh, happening. Uh, in, in our system. And for the data analysis, definitely uh, we are uh, producing the data analysis at the LLG level, district level, and province level, even the, in the national levels, and monthly analysis by major uh, health indicators, uh, especially for the time series, based on the time series analysis. Data analysis by major indicator by sex, age, caste, ethnicity, and then uh, uh, based on the National Planning Commission report, we divide the, our total caste and ethnicity in the six major block. So every data in DHIS2 categorized by the caste and ethnicity. So we always provide those type of data 
to the concerned division and center who looks the equity and equality uh, equality aspect. So, uh, and data are the presenting at the number, uh, yeah, uh, percentage bar graphs. Uh, it is uh, it is the uh, methods of the presentation we adopted in GHIS two systems. Next. Yes, yes. Uh, regarding the data dissemination and use, every year we produce the annual report and send to the all the concerned authorities. And periodically, uh, we updated the uh, sustainable development goal. We always, uh, we as a monthly basis, we provide the data to the ministry and ministry uh, monthly basis update the sustainable development targets, all those things. And uh, uh, another part is the result framework. Uh, we have the national health strategy document and the, that document clearly mentioned the result framework and based on that uh, result framework there are the l l large number of the indicator uh, uh, mentioned and based on those indicator we have to provide the information to the ministry and the national planning commission and all, another is the uh, dli indicators uh, basically the uh, world bank provides some sort of the amount to us it is basically performance based uh, performance based disbursement based indicators. So, based on our performance, they provide the uh, amount to us, and and they all lie on the based on the our HMIS data. So, annual planning, monitoring, evaluation, budgeting of the, all the health programs, it is done on the basis of our DSIS2 data. Academia journal uh, article for the national international levels, and the student researchers all are using the, our data. Basically, university. And then the, our NHRC National Research Council we have, they are uh, regularly using the, our data based on our data, they publish the reports. And in the, in the decision-making process at the, all the health facility levels, they are using the, some sort of the, our SMIS data, this. And this is the annual reports. And then these all are the, our stakeholders using the, our SMIS data. Next. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, today morning, uh, I observed the uh, presentation uh, and, um, uh, and then speech from the zone. Yes, we are facing same problem. Even the government already decided and all the legal documents say SMIS is the only one integrated comprehensive system. But the parallelly other system are comes. It is happening in my country too. But the main objective of the government is to, to reduce all the, those type of the information systems. So look, these are the all, all the subsystems. Subsystems, so how we can integrate all, some of the system already integrate and link to us. We have already started, but others, some of the remaining subsystem are not integrated to the HMIS, but they have to mandatory to integrate legally. It is mandatory to integrate. So we are we are thinking how can we link how can we integrate it in this in this particular area uh, and uh, based on the uh, today's morning discussions I request to the uh, concern uh, uh, expert and the organization to support to us we are facing that problem yes next Yes, uh, I have already mentioned uh, uh, all the health facility re report to us. Those who are not uh, online reporting, they send the report to the LLG and LLG focal person enter the report as, as per the health facility base. And it is online. Every province, every concerned division and every stakeholder can see uh, our DHIS2 uh, base data uh, based on their user ID and password. Next. Yes, these are the partners support to strengthening the our HMI systems. Basically, WHO, of course, technically they have the uh, technical support to us. UNICEF, yes, and GIZ, USAID, UNFPA, uh, Global Fund, and UNDP. These are the major partners support to us. And then um, uh, other two, but uh, uh, these are the major partners. Yes, next. So uh, our HMIs already use the DHS. Beside the SMIS, these, these systems also use the DHIS2. Uh, yesterday, the, the day before yesterday, one of the, our colleagues also presented regarding the HIV AIDS of uh, tracker model of the, our, uh, our NASA systems. Same in the uh, EWARS. This is surveillance system. It's called the EWARS. It is under the EDCD. 
uh, it is using the DHIS2, HIV AIDS uh, patient tracking system. Uh, it is already presented here also. Ayurveda management information system, it is in the process. It is in the process, but they are they want to use the DHIS2 tracker. And the COVID-19 vaccine reporting, right? now it is, it is regular conducting. Our all the COVID related vaccine data comes uh, through the DHIS2. And we report uh, daily basis report to the ministry and then even, even the prime minister office. And drug resistant TB patient tracker system we have, and we, uh, that system also use the DHS2, FCSB registry, health facility registry, OCMC, on stop crisis management center, uh, and then SSU, uh, social service unit, and geriatric services. All, uh, these are already used the DHS2 platform just uh, one year back. They started to using the DHS2. And national health insurance system, they, 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 they're using the DHS2, but still some work uh, has been remaining to perform. And the malaria system, it is supported by the WHO. And our, our friend, Hips India, also mentioned uh, and support for this malaria, uh, to, to make the malaria tracker for the malaria patient. And it is in the process. Next. Yes, uh, now opportunity in my systems, basically growing the DHS2 community in the country. Uh, we have already started to dialogue with the university and start uh, dialogue with the resource, resource institutions to, to build the, uh, our the DHS2 community. So it is growing, it is growing as compared to the previous. Now we have some sort of the IT experts, some sort of the IT engineer uh, who can interested to uh, to 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 performing the uh, uh, performing to work in the DHIS2 systems in country customized capacity. Now we have the IT expert and IT engineer who customize uh, the our DHIS2. It is good uh, platform for us. Wider interest on the open source software, including the ministry, and then the sound legal background we have. And we have started, already started the MOE with the Katmandu University, as well as the Trivon University. And directly online reporting for, from the 4,000 plus health facility in DHS2 within the coming six months. It is mandatory to, 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 to complete this tax. And tax, uh, this tax is given, given um, uh, ministry to us. So within the six months, now it is 3,300. Uh, 3, within the six months, we have to reach another 700. So it is mandatory for us. And then we all, uh, already revised our SOP of HMIS, data sharing policies, and user manual all are completed, and it, uh, it is in the process of endorsement. Next. Yes, uh, we have implemented the dashboard program by taking the support from the UNICEF. We have already started the, in the seven, 17 LLG, uh, especially for the... Uh, uh, um, uh, dashboard related program. That dashboard is the uh, mono indicators as well as the dichotomous indicator or composite indicators. All type of indicators we, we provide in, the, in that system and that system automatically generates the, the dashboards and that dashboard is, uh, uh, there are the two types of dashboards. One is the, for the internal use and for another is the public use. And it, it is highly demanded uh, program from the uh, our LLGs, our mayor, deputy mayor, chief of the, our LLG, they are very much interested. Please, uh, very fast, you, you have to uh, expand these programs. Right now, we have, uh, we have the 33 LLG uh, using this um, dashboard related activities in the local level. And uh, we have to expand the RDQA, DQA in the districts, implementation of the ESR, EMR in the hospital. And regarding the EMR, in my country, there are a the lot of the software. Lot of the software, there are different type of software, using uh, different hospital using the different type of software. Right now, uh, we already started to, to, uh, to make one standardized things. These are the basic things. Based on these fundamental basic things, only software can, can uh, fight in the bidding process. We are going in that way because it creates the com complication for us. So right now, if every bidder should follow, every software bidder should follow uh, uh, based on that standardized and then uh, that document and based on that document, only he, he, uh, that party is eligible to, 
to 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 uh, to to to, uh, to debate uh, uh, to submit their document in the bidding process that that is going on so uh, for the emr ehr for the especially ehr we have to work lot so but but the government already decided for the digital health systems it is already announced uh, announced by the minister and we, uh, it is also announced in the national planning commission so we are going in to making the ehr throughout the country it is in the process and study the electronic database recording system and we are also focusing not only for the reporting uh, we are focusing on the uh, all the recording tools should be paperless we are we are thinking in that line and some of the our health facility already uh, uh, introduced the record based uh, hmis system and incorporate the infrastructure management system in the hmis it is in process new server set up in national data center with proper data security so uh, right now uh, the ipd who support uh, to us very 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 advanced very very good uh, recent uh, uh, software uh, uh, server to us so again the global fund support to uh, it is in the planning to buy the very standardized very good uh, modern software so server to us based on that server and we, which previously we have all together now we are we are going to build a national data warehouse especially for the dhs for the hmi systems that is in planning next yes these are the issues these are the issue we are facing in uh, in launching the dhs2 or in, in our information system first is the calendar related issues we have the our own calendar so it, it is called the nepalis nepalis uh, fiscal year based calendars so but right now our it guys are already solved the uh, this issue and now, right now we have the calendar for the infinity year and then we already request to the oslo university Uh, to 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 incorporate that calendar in their systems when they upgrade uh, our calendar also automatically upgraded so we are uh, requesting them and it is in the process it is in the process hopefully very soon it will be solved and uh, using the present dhs2 yes still uh, we are in the 2.30 version and we have to go to the 2.36 and to uh, for the upgrading the 2.36 testing is going on it is in the process it is going on it is in the process hopefully very soon by taking the support from the our uh, oslo team uh, oslo team uh, we will uh, uh, perform uh, to to launching the dhs 2.36 in uh, near futures and and i am very much appreciate i'm and and i'm uh, i'm very much glad to say uh, our the uh, university of oslo team uh, we have already conducted two or three zoom meeting Uh, with them with my expert and with all the program managers and uh, based on their suggestion recommendation we are we are already start the testing so hopefully very soon we will reach uh, our target so thanks to the oslo team for their great support to us and uh, uh, collaboration with the uh, academy research institute yeah i have already mentioned we have started to collaborate and then uh, and establish a relationship to 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 the katmandu university as well as the tribune university we have started and then the in three areas we are we want to expand the dhs2 the program division asked to us uh, they are interested to 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 introduce the dhs2 especially for the immunization and other program telemedicine and dissemination there's a uh, dashboard related activities these are the core area uh, program division and we are thinking to 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 use the dhs2 platform that is our in plan and then we, we have already implemented icd 11 i have already mentioned in the more morbidity morbidity part uh, it is good but in the mortality part especially in the cause of death uh, underlying cause of all those things we are facing some sort of the problem and then the we we start the dialogue to the postal team hopefully uh, very soon we will so solve that problem next yes uh, this is the uh, yes uh, building of the dhs community it is very important and uh, based on in kathmandu university every year they produce the 400 it engineer in trivandrum university also produce the it engineer 
But the problem is some sort of the brain drain. It is a very problem we are facing. But, but in their course, if we introduce the DHIS2, if we, if we provide the thesis in DHIS2, in the university student, and if we invited those students in my office, in the honors of training, in term, then automatically we can, we, we can build the DHIS2 community. We are thinking in that way. And the university agreed to us. And we are in, we are in, uh, we are, we are in that line. Yes. So um, uh, establishment of interoperative labs. Yes. Uh, recently, uh, GIZ and the WHO they provide to establish the two uh, interoperative lab, and one lab will be recently will be built in the Kathmandu University. And then uh, from the technical support from the WHO, we are very soon. Uh, starting the uh, uh, establishment, the interoperative lab in the Kathmandu University, and and for the uh, another interoperative lab, we are still not uh, decided. And um, yes, uh, we have the one IM system for COVID nineteen related activities. Yes, for the COVID related information, especially for both of area of the vaccine, we use the DHS two. But this, uh, all of the other COVID related activities for information collect from the DNA hospital all the labs related information uh, information and all the poe point of entry related information and cict contact testing and the case investigation related all information we collect by the separately our own software that is called the imu information management unit for the covid pandemic and that that software uh, built by the our it experts so it is it is going on very smoothly working uh, working uh, right now, we uh, on the basis of that software, we are providing the all the information to the all the concerned stakeholder, even the prime minister office, and then QR code certification, also uh, provided by that software. And each and every LLG now produce the QR code certification and provide their citizens. It is happening in my country. So um, yeah, linking of the previous software. Ah, yes, we are facing this this problem. So uh, I can also request to the uh, export and the Oslo team. Basically, in the previous, we are using the local software. Uh, in the first, we use the Fox Pro. And then you use the local software. And in 2016, we started to use the DHS2. So we want to main streaming all the previous data based on the DHS2 platform. How can we link it? all the data in same stream. That is the challenge for us. So I'm requesting to the technical uh, expert to support uh, in that area. And never ending, oh yes. And this is the one common problem we are facing. Never ending the revision and the emerging reporting requirements. Every division, some change, some sort of the activities and demand to, to collect the data throughout the country. And every time it is not possible. So based on, Based on that problem, we have already uh, mentioned in our SOP, our user policy, our uh, other documents clearly mentioned, we cannot revise every, every month. At least after the one year, they send their demand to us, we collect, but every, uh, every one year after crossing the one year, then we will sit together. Then if needed, if they justify to us, then we will put, otherwise not. And every two and a half years, we will midterm our systems. And then every five years, we will revise our HMIS tools. That is in process uh, mentioned in our document. And the uh, IT infrastructure, the internet problem in the remote health facilities, especially for the high Himalaya area, uh, there is no internet. Even there is no electricity in some of the high, high peak um, mountain area. So we are facing the problem. Uh, basically, th this problem and the uh, digital literacy among the healthcare workers. Yes, it is also some, sometimes create the problem for us, and they they they, they deny to report uh, report due to that facts. Next, next. Yes, these are the way forward, and this is the, my last last uh, presentation slide. Yes, we have to scale out all the health facilities and hundred percent. Uh, health facility reporting in DHS to in, in online. That is the, our primary motto of, of, of SMIS. 
continue upgrade the DHS2 for the new version, facilitate the open uh, uh, HIE base interoperability, continue expansion of the in country capacity, country, uh, con country community for digital health, engage the academia, university research institute, uh, promote the stand standard based information system with interoperability features, improve the data quality. These are the, our way forward. And based on our approved document, which is called the, our HMIS roadmap 2022 to 2030, we will perform any activities based on this legal document, which is approved by the Minister of Health and Populace. That is the, our primary of document a document to, pop, to, to, to improve the, our HMIS systems. Next. Yes, yes, this is the very beautiful place. We call the Pokhara. It is the lake city of our country. And, and uh, I invite you all and uh, welcome to you all in my country. Please come and join to us. Thank you very much. Namaste. I think uh, after the, all the presentation, then. Okay, okay, please, 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 please. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Animal health sector. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for question. Yes, uh, we have the one uh, committee, committee uh, of Department of Health Services and Animal Department. We have the jointly one committee, and uh, there is the two in that committee. There is the one advisory committee, and one is the technical committee. Yes, we collect uh, basically in the EOR systems. We collect the data in two types of data. One is the IPD related data. Yes. Uh, immunization prevented disease related information we collect and yes we also collect the some of the information related to the animals just like uh, um, just like uh, dengue just like uh, um, uh, other other epidemic all uh, other type of the epidemic related data which is caused by the vectors especially for the animals we we collect in our system it is in our system and it is under the edcd it is the, under the edcd yes we have Thank you. Any other questions? Because it's really yummy, and it's very, it's very interesting to learn about other subjects in uh, this region, how the uh, uh, their system. I want to ask about establish the interoperability in the labs, like. Thank you. Uh, basically, regarding the interoperability, actually, I'm I'm not an IT expert, but I'm the manager position. But I will answer to you. Look, what happened? Uh, basically, when we 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 go to the university, especially in the IT department, they demand to us. In my country, there is no interoperative lab at all. So they demand to us. All the students who are studying in the IT, they want to to test. There, there are some sort of apps, there's some, some sort of anything 
in the, their own lab, no? but there is no any lab. So that demand comes from the university for us. So based on that demand, and this year we are planning to establish the two interoperable lab. One is supported by the WHO for the Katman University, and another is uh, budgeted fix, all fix, but the venue in where we establish it is not fixed. But this year we will build the two interoperable lab. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Okay. So, Malin, if you're there, could you share your screen? Hi, Nick. Yes, I am here. Can you share your screen? Uh, yes, for a minute. Thank you. And just introduce yourself as well, Malin, before you start your presentation. Can you see it now? Uh, it's coming. OK, yeah, we're ready. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Nick. So, uh, good af good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Nepal, for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation that you also identify some of the opportunities that we also that can also enhance our uh, uh, HMIS uh, system. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge the committee members uh, for organizing this uh, meeting, and also Nick for giving us this opportunity to share our. PHS to uh, implementation stories here in Vanuatu. Uh, my name is Marlon uh, Dairi. I work as the health information or HIS officer for the Ministry of Health here in Vanuatu. I have been uh, using VHS2 for nine years as a data entry, a uh, data analysis, and at some uh, point, uh, working with Nick and uh, HIPS Vietnam to test and implement some of the new uh, module that we uh, features within the uh, DHIS2 that I will be sharing with you today. So uh, on that picture, that is our beautiful uh, Portfila city. So that, that is our capital city. Uh, Malin, can you just put it in a presentation mode? Yes, uh, Nick. So Fernando first adopted the DHS2 in 2014 to establish the, uh, the, the reading health information system for uh, primary and uh, uh, yeah, primary uh, health or primary care. That includes uh, collecting outpatient visits, environmental health, uh, non communicable disease, and reproductive health, et cetera. Uh, most of the data has been collected on paper based, and then uh, they were ended by a provincial HS officer on the DHS2. And uh, Malibu was the first uh, public health uh, program to develop their own uh, specialized module using a combination of aggregated, uh, aggregated and event-based uh, reporting to map case by village. And uh, it, was a success, it was successfully implemented. And now they were also um, uh, trialing the uh, Praga-based uh, system, which uh, they will be using next year, uh, 2023. Other diseases such as uh, TP, uh, EPI, or immunization, uh, neglected uh, tropical disease, also saw the value of integrating the standalone system into the DHS2 to, DHS to, to take advantage of the system's functionality, security, 
and also the community of practice and the efficiency uh, gained by using the system. And uh, some of the major challenges uh, that uh, or not challenges, but some of the major changes that are currently taking place on the DHS2 are the configuration of the new um, HIS form, uh, development of the facility uh, inventory form, uh, the school-based form, the hospital form, and uh, other changes is also considered such as the develop, uh, development of uh, tracker modules for public health uh, program and linking the hospital patient information system and supply to the do the uh, DHS too, but this is a long term plan. A big lesson learned when we first introduced uh, DHS to in our countries that um, uh, uh, what, uh, in country capacity, and uh, like uh, uh, Nepal also mentioned. Uh, building DHS to community. We also having uh, that that similar challenges and uh, also uh, the changes in uh, HIS management staff result in significant loss of uh, of of knowledge and institutional uh, memory. And uh, again, uh, we also lack technical capacity here in countries. And uh, the second one is a semi reliant on uh, development partners and external DHS to developers for modification to our system. So this is some of the things that uh, we, 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 sometime, we, we find it sometimes difficult. And uh, also poor design of data collection forms and uh, absence of uh, guidelines for data collection as a result in, in poor data collection, uh, poor uh, data quality for some uh, program. But uh, this has been solved, uh, thank you, thanks to uh, to Michael Batswood, so he, he has been uh, doing a tremendous job here uh, by reviewing some of the uh, data elements that we have and strengthening this uh, uh, this uh, uh, poor design of a data collection. Some of the context that uh, Fanua we should take and uh, also maybe the, the Pacific uh, is to, to take a concept conservative uh, approach as we build staff cap capacity and uh, try not to use any custom apps when possible. And uh, also uh, try uh, direct user guides and SOP as much as possible. Stay maybe two or three fashion back uh, at all times. And uh, we also encountered this when we have the faxing um, of the faxing server, which was been uh, um, crashed. Uh, but we were so fortunate that we were uh, maybe uh, two fashion uh, back, back, so we were not been affected. Some of the successes that we we had uh, during the um, using our DHS was the the implementation of the vaccine registry. Um, during the COVID nineteen vaccine registry, um, it has been most apprehensive and uh, intensive health data, data intensive health related data collection exercise of uh, uh, EFA conducted in Vanuatu. Uh, the, uh, the next one is that a, a DHS2 tracker instead was developed to uh, register and track all COVID-19 vaccine recipients in Vanuatu. Uh, since the reload in of the COVID-19 vaccination in uh, 2021, of uh, 145,000 uh, people were almost registered, and um, and we have been registered of uh, 2,600,000 uh, doses. So our population is somewhere about uh, 300,000, uh, and uh, we we managed we have managed to uh, register uh, 145,000 people in the. DHS to track a motive, especially for the vaccine. One of the success studies that over 100 users across the six provinces of Fernando have uh, actively used the DHS to a vaccine register system for endeavoring and analyzing data on a daily basis. As still some of the success with the vaccine uh, 
vaccine which is three, uh, using the Ethan report uh, features on the DHS2 elaborates um, the, the coverage report were, were generated on on uh, on weekly basis by the national and uh, the provincial team. The analysis provided by this weekly report uh, played a critical role in guiding the Ministry of Health, um, especially uh, to, to, to target the, the population that requires uh, vaccination. We were also success, uh, successfully work along with the Department of uh, Civil Registration. We were able to call up the vaccine uh, vaccination registry to identify and address gaps in the civil status of another citizen. One of the uh, major success that we had is um, working with uh, HIPS, or with the assistance of HIPS of Vietnam, the Fund of the Ministry of Health has been able to produce and successfully deploy an encrypted COVID-19 vaccine certificate, which we are now using for overseas travels, uh, especially to Australia and New Zealand, mostly. And as of uh, August, this year, 2022, uh, the certificate has been uh, generated and verified from a public, uh, from a publicly accessible website or uh, portal. Some of the challenges uh, we had when we implement the Fanuatu vaccine registry is that. Uh, Adaptation of the Android app was challenging, especially where it was uh, needed most, especially in remote areas. And uh, this was largely due to the limited amount of uh, uh, trainings that the users were able to, uh, to receive because uh, it was only a week uh, that we, we conducted a training then they used. So it, it was quite difficult for them to, to use the Android app. And that was one of the challenges that we, we had. Uh, the other one is identi identifying uh, defaulters, especially people who fail to turn up for their second shop uh, directly from the DHS2 platform was difficult and it required uh, a semi-automated work around uh, using XL. Uh, and lastly, uh, users would often create an event and navigate without completing it, resulting in, uh, in consistency uh, yes, inconsistency with uh, the data that has been ended. We, we also experienced a few, a few uh, set of crash around October 2021, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, these were quickly rectified by upgrading the, self, upgrading the server. And uh, users often ended in current vaccine batch number requiring a bulk uh, editing. And I think uh, we also thank uh, Nick for helping us with this. And uh, the, the, use of, the user audit features cease functioning and we were unable to identify who uh, incorrectly complete the event. So this is something that we really want to be fixed, the, the user audit features because this also help us to track the users who um, make mistakes on the forms. Some of the lessons learned from the vaccine registry is that we quickly realized that making data field mandatory was essential for consistent uh, data collection as user would uh, often skip fields and complete the event without entering the required information. And uh, secondly, having a hard copy, a hard copy or paper-based uh, vaccination form as a backup was critical, critically important, especially in places with low uh, network coverage and to cross-check that every vaccination event has um, uh, correctly ended and complete. And uh, 
Something that we are looking ahead for is the introduction of a vaccine certificate, which we have already uh, had. And uh, thank you to uh, the wonderful job that uh, Nick and uh, his team has done. So we, we now have the vaccination portal that uh, people, the public can now access and they can also download their um, own vaccine certificate which is very uh, helpful for us at the moment. And uh, we also did a, a, depth, um, a depth analysis of the data, and uh, that also helped us to do a presentation on a symposium that was held uh, last month, October 20, uh, in October 20. So we used some of the information on the data, on the vaccine history to, to do a presentation on the symposium. And uh, yeah, exactly. We also um, looking ahead to explore the potential for integrating a tracker module for Vanuatu uh, for the Vanuatu spreading immunization. But we also uh, identify some of the challenges to do this. But uh, yes, we're, we're looking ahead of uh, doing that. But uh, it, it requires uh, a, a good consultation before we can uh, uh, introduce. Uh, a tracker module for human immunization. The other thing is a develop and public, uh, publish uh, dynamic dashboard via EPI uh, using Power BI uh, that can pull information from DHS to and visualizing uh, information on Power BI. So this is some of the things that we are looking ahead of doing and uh, develop interoperability with other systems being used by the Ministry of Health, example, the code that are currently used for case management and contact tracing, especially for COVID-19. I, I think this is the end of my uh, presentation and I thank you so everyone for listening and I wish you everyone a uh, uh, happy and a Merry Christmas holiday. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Malin. Um, are there any questions for the Vanuatu team? Okay, Malin, there's no questions at this time. Um, so thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I'm going to ask the team from Central Asia um, if they can come up. Um, so Malin, you can uh, stop your screen sharing. Want us to project your presentation? Yeah, yeah. Um, should we share the screen? You guys want to share? Uh, we have a Uh, hello, everyone. Um, oops. Disappear. Yes, 
Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for this technical issue. Uh, today we wanted to uh, tell you about uh, experience of Central Asia in uh, using the DHS2 tracker. Uh, like this. Uh, and briefly, we will uh, talk about a little bit about our team, uh, about our project background. Uh, the tracker, the HIV tracker, uh, the mobile uh, application, and uh, the integration possibilities with the Power BI. Uh, next, please. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to mention our backstopping team from FHI 360. Uh, since we started the project, uh, they've been constantly supporting us and um, they helped us a lot in adaptation of standard checker, uh, in, uh, helped us to launch uh, the instances in all three countries of Central Asia. Um, and uh, we still have uh, weekly constant uh, SI consultations uh, with, with them, so they really help us a lot. Uh, we have uh, like since the beginning of the project we are uh, using this gun chart and we track like all the updates and uh, uh, things we need to do uh, on tracker <laughs> as a couple of words just uh, we like a small team not not as big as your team space but like we have two person in kyrgyzstan one in kazakhstan and uh, two, two person in Tajikistan who are involved in uh, adaptation and all this work with uh, uh, Checker. Uh, next, please. Uh, our, our project, it's called EPIC. Uh, we started in 2020. It is uh, PEPFAR funded. And uh, we work among key populations uh, on testing on HIV and uh, uh, linking them to treatment, treatment cascade. Uh, and when we started in 2020, like we um, had no database, uh, we were like uh, flat, and uh, um, we have uh, adopted the paper-based forms and other tools from the FHI 360. Uh, um, uh, expertise uh, and uh, since then like uh, our CBOs uh, were using them but we knew that we, we need some system to, to be able to check uh, all the data and um, initially we had uh, a couple of consultations because we uh, in our previous project we were using the MIS database not the HS2 base so we uh, uh, initially, we planned to use that base, but then uh, after uh, consultation with uh, our backstopping team, we decided to adopt the DHS2 uh, database. Uh, it was uh, a new tool for Central Asia. It was never used before, uh, as in many of your countries. Uh, so it was kind of a new, new experience. And uh, there were some uh, challenges. Uh, there were uh, like a data sovereignty limitations. Uh, that means that uh, according to the national uh, law, all the client's data should be stored in the country. Uh, before that, we wanted to store it somewhere in the cloud. Uh, that's why we, uh, 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 we had to buy servers and it was also challenging because it was 2020, COVID, uh, all the limitations and the server was uh, all, uh, purchased in the US and it was delivered to our country in, I don't remember, three or four months. So it was also a challenge. And uh, uh, after that, uh, all the, when all the instances were installed on our services, we started to adapt it. Uh, the standard HIV tracker to our project needs. It also uh, was um, a little bit challenging, you know, like when you sit at home uh, you, during the lockdown. So yes, it was our initial steps. And uh, uh, our three countries, uh, uh, 
they were uh, they received uh, trainings from uh, headquarters, and uh, we started to uh, work on our own since then. And uh, my thought is going to do. So, Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, our project, uh, our experience on using gadgets to is uh, comparatively short, and we like infants in using gadgets too. But nevertheless, we try to uh, use to use it uh, to constantly increase our capacity on using gadgets to them. And we use these resources uh, to increase our capacity, especially we use academy courses, gadgets to online academy courses, and also we use other uh, online platforms to solve our uh, issues uh, using gadgets to next. Next. Uh, as mentioned before, we use uh, uh, standard, standardized gadgets to check out metadata package for HIV programs. Uh, this uh, package was provided by our, by our HQ office of FHI 360. Uh, this package uh, simplifies gadgets to configuration uh, for HIV programs to support case management, HIV case management. And also it contains automated reporting of more than 70 PEPFAR, MER, and other custom indicators. Next. Next slide. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, advantage of using this HIV tracker package. It is comprehensive. It, it, uh, con it contains all uh, HIV services. Uh, uh, secondly, it's easy to adapt. It enables quick and cost-effective deployment, and um, and also it uh, uses promote data use policy. Uh, collect once and use uh, this data many times, and also simplify reporting. It reduces data entry burden by automatically calculating common HIV indicators. Next slide. Uh, more, moreover, uh, we uh, this HIV program package, uh, uh, metadata package, uh, contains uh, additional uh, uh, supplementary programs like peer worker program. This is this is a relationship, relationship between client and outreach worker. The second supplement program is hotspot program. This is uh, builds a relationship between hotspots, the place where uh, uh, our beneficiaries color uh, gathering and index testing tool. This is the third relationship program. The next. The next slide, please. Uh, also, we localized uh, our checker. Um, we translated uh, our metadata package into Russian language. In our countries, we use uh, Russian language mostly, and also we adapted uh, all metadata, we adapted fields, uh, options, uh, data elements, and, and also, uh, next, next slide, also we, uh, we adapted uh, our indicators, yeah, as I mentioned before, there are uh, many program indicators, but we uh, modified some of them in order to meet uh, requirements of our project. We modified it and check it, and then we use these indicators. Next slide, please. Uh, this is another part of customization. We also modified and added uh, or units, or units, uh, provincial, uh, districts, and uh, and our uh, settlements. Next slide. Um, also, we added new additional stages 
to this HIV, uh, HIV package created demographics, high age, and service plan uh, stage for this HIV package. Next slide, please. Uh, also, we added geospatial data to our uh, four units. We added uh, longitude and latitude, and uh, also we added some general uh, files to our some more units. And we visualized our uh, program data. For instance, here we visual visualized our testing data, HIV testing data, and data of our uh, HIV cases. Which we which occurred in these settlements. Uh, next slide, please. And also, uh, our our country is uh, building some ditches to community, uh, so called. Some projects, uh, some projects use ditches too. For instance, our epic project or our focused on the Republican Center for Immunization. They also started to use DHS2, JZ used Pernatal project, and in Kazakhstan, in Tajikistan, they use uh, the following project on strength and healthcare information system. And it's interesting, it's, it's precedent, for instance, in Tajikistan, they also use DHS2 for registering marital status. Uh, it's interesting, but also they also use DHS2 for this uh, project. Next. The next slide, please. And then this is our uh, success story. Uh, our team uh, from Pakistan uh, Epic Project, we uh, and our, also our specials from HQ, they are delivered a presentation for our Republican Aid Center. And our RIPRAC compared alternative software tools and they welcome it plans to use DHS2 and soon RAC will adopt DHS2 for prevention programs at the community-based organizations level for the social partnership project. The next slide, please. And also, uh, in order to build uh, uh, memory, institutional memory, we uh, constantly deliver the trainings for our CBOs, for our community-based organization, for our NGOs in all three countries, in Kazakhstan, in Mishke, in Pakistan, and in Tajikistan. We constantly uh, train them, consult them. Uh, 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 our partner uh, in, uh, NGOs. So let's move on. Uh, um, a few months ago, 